polite because you're a first time guest. Okay. How would you like to be addressed? David, David Diamante. Yeah, is that okay? I like to make you feel comfortable because this is about you. Okay. <laughs> October Red Boxing, I'm joined. Delighted to be joined by actually a first time guest. I do like first time guests. Ring announcer, MC, Master of Ceremonies, David Diamante. Nice to see you. Diamante. I've got, to say it, I've got to say it twice. That's it. That's it. How you doing? All right. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. I'm, we're here in Nottingham. Um, obviously, coming off a big fight last week in Las Vegas, um, and we got a whole lot coming up. But uh, really happy to be in Nottingham. Great city. A lot of fun. Obviously, the Lee Wood fight uh, fell through. You know, with Mauricio Lara. Hopefully, uh, Lee uh, recovers well, and we can have that fight in the future. But I'm very happy that this fight's still going ahead, and I like you know that we've got uh, Maxi and Kid Galahad as the main event. Injury, I get it, there's, there's, there's a vast difference, but you're no stranger to injury. Unfortunately, you suffered a bad uh, motorcycle accident. Was it a couple of years ago now? No, not, it hasn't even been a year. It was uh, December 20th of just last year. And how was that, your recovery, getting back to it? Because the way that it was described, I honestly thought you weren't going to walk again. Yeah, it's, they, they, they thought I was not going to walk again, so uh, I was told that was a distinct possibility, but I had a great surgeon and uh, just came back, so I forward motion, you know, still dealing with it, um, still physical therapy, still, it's a lot of ramifications, I'm still in pain and still doing what I'm doing, but moving forward, so that's, to me it's forward motion, I'm just cracking on. Okay, so the Triple G card that you were at, give us your thoughts on how Triple G looked in that fight. You know, it, it's 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 interesting because those guys are, are such storied rivals. They're two absolute, you know, some of the, the best fighters of their day, right? Um, Triple G, of course, has lived at 160 his whole career. Um, Canelo has, has gone up, different won, won titles in different weight classes. Um, we got two great fights. The third fight was very interesting because it happened, obviously, about four years after the second fight. And... Triple G just looked like he saw the openings, but he wasn't exactly able to pull the trigger when he wanted to. Um, I think, you know, Father Time is undefeated, and it's obvious that, you know, Triple G is, is, is now kind of on the, the backside of his career, however you want to say that. Um, but it's possible Canelo might be reaching the pinnacle of his or maybe on the possible downside of his also. I, I thought that the fight changed in about round nine. Um, Triple G hit him with a really cute uppercut. Um, it actually... It actually looked like it affected Canelo, um, and then he did, and then it changed the the, the, the rest of the fight. But it, it was too little, too late. So uh, it was still, you know, an exciting fight, and two two great guys, and I think they'll both be Hall of Famers. Uh, but we'll see. But you know, for me, it's interesting because can, uh, Triple G never won the the lineal championship in the in the 160 pound division, and he never was undisputed. So he was kind of robbed of that in that first fight when a lot of people thought he won, which that would have, because that was at 160. Even if he won this last one, it was at 168. But it was interesting, and it was a great trilogy for the sport of boxing. We did hear, we had some comments on the internet that were basically saying, you know, the scorecards were a bit favourable to Triple G. And the people were saying, well, it's favourable this time because he didn't get the favour last time. I'm like, no, it doesn't work like that. He's judging, you judge on the actual fight itself. Well, I'm not a boxing judge, but it should always work like that, right? It's it's a 10-point must system, and there are, are certain criteria that boxing judges go by. And the way, I, I think the best way to always judge a fight, who would you rather be at the end of that round, specifically? Who would you rather be at the end of that round? That's who gets the 10 points or, you know, out of that round. I like that. I've never looked at it like that before. Who would you like to be at the end of that round? Rather be. Yeah, I like it. So we talk about that then, Saudi, another experience for yourself. How was that out there? Oh, Saudi, yeah, Saudi was great. Um, that was my fourth time in Saudi Arabia, my third time calling a fight there. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to call the very first fight ever in Saudi Arabia, which was the headline uh, fight of Callum Smith fighting uh, against George Groves for the, the World Boxing Super Series. But this was great. I mean, this, this fight was in Jeddah. Uh, crowd was great. Um, they treat us really well. Uh, it was a great time. I mean, really super exciting. Um, obviously, Usyk came out on top, and uh, we'll see. But I, I think Joshua did really great, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes next. It's going to be interesting where Usyk goes next. They say he might even be playing football now, so who knows? What was it like for you at the end of the fight when obviously the uh, Usyk's hand got held up, and obviously you were there? How did 
how did Joshua see him? How was that like emotional reaction of his? How did you like see it firsthand? Look, I, I think that it, you know he's a passionate guy. He puts so much into this fight. He's been training for this fight forever, and I think it's just you know we saw a real side of him, and uh, you can't fault anyone for being real. Can't argue with that. And your predictions, then, or in fact, what is your favorite fight off this card this card this weekend? My favorite fight off this card. You know, there's a couple nice little fights. I mean, the Junaid Boston fight, I, I really like seeing him. He's one of our new signings. Cyrus Pattinson's, oh, he always, you know, comes to fight. He's really exciting. Saul Dakers, back in action. Um, I do like the, the, the Hannah Rankin, Terry Belter uh, fight. You know, it's an interesting fight um, for the Unified uh, Super Welterweight Championship. It'll be interesting to see Terry at this weight. And of course, the main event, speaking of weights, it's interesting to see Kid Galahad up at lightweight and see how he does. You know, uh, obviously, he was heartbroken, you know, losing his world title, but he's back in action. You know, he's about business. No one works harder than him. But Maxi, he's, you know, the Cinderella man. So it's a great story. He holds that IBO strap, and it's going to be a hell of a fight. So, to be honest, I like the card. Cinderella, definitely. Them two do make really good dance partners. It's been an absolute pleasure. First-time guest, David Diamante, October Red Boxing. Until the next time. Thank you so much, Abs. We'll talk to you soon. Hi, and thank you for watching October Red Boxing. Like, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications. You can also find us on Instagram at October Red Boxing and on Twitter, October Red UK. And remember... At October Red, we stay ready.